June 4. St. Francis Caracciolo. St. Francis was born on October 13th in the year 1563 in the Abruzzi area of Italy. His father was from the nobility and his mother's family could claim relationship with St. Thomas Aquinas. Being well trained by his pious parents, he grew up fulfilling their highest hopes as a devout and charitable young man. In other aspects, he lived the usual life of a nobleman in the country, being addicted to sport, especially hunting. When he was 22, he developed a skin disease similar to leprosy, and it soon assumed so virulent a form that his case was regarded as hopeless. With death staring him in the face, he vowed that if he regained his health, he would devote the rest of his life to God and to the service of his fellow man. He recovered so speedily that the cure was held to be miraculous. Then, eager to carry out his promise, he went to Naples to study for the priesthood. After his ordination, he joined a confraternity known as the White Robes of Justice, whose ministry was preparing condemned prisoners to die a holy death. In the year 1588, a patrician who had taken holy orders was inspired with the idea of founding an association of priests pledged to combine the active and contemplative life. He consulted Fabricio Caracciolo, the dean of the collegiate church of Santa Maria in Naples, and a letter inviting the cooperation of another, Asinio Caracciolo, a distant kinsman, was by mistake delivered to our saint. Our saint, recognizing at once the finger of God in the apparent heir, hastened to associate himself with this new foundation. By way of preparation, they made a forty days retreat and, after a strict fast, as well as earnest prayer, they drew up the rules for the proposed order. As soon as their number was twelve, both founders went to Rome to obtain the approval of the sovereign pontiff. On June 1, 1588, Sixtus V solemnly ratified their new society under the title of Minor Clerks Regular, and on April 9th of the following year, the two founders made their solemn profession. Caracciolo taking the name Francis out of devotion to the great saint of Assisi. In addition to the usual three vows, the members of the new association took a fourth, never to seek any office of dignity either within the order or outside of it. To grow the order, the two co-founders undertook journeys throughout Italy and Spain, on foot and without money, content with the shelter and crust given out by charity. During their travels, their new foundation was not allowed to suffer in their absence. Indeed, the house could not contain all who wished to enter, and soon after they were invited to take over Santa Maria Maggiore. The minor clerks regular worked mainly as missionaries, but some of them devoted themselves to priestly work in hospitals and prisons. They also had places which they called hermitages for those who felt called to a life of contemplation. In the year 1591, he was elected the first general of his order. This was done as he was still in much sorrow caused by the premature death of his co-founder, Adorano, at the age of 40. Francis redoubled his austerities and devoted seven hours daily to the meditation on the Passion, besides passing most of the night praying before the Blessed Sacrament. He was commonly called the Preacher of Divine Love, and in Spain the order did indeed flourish. It was always before the Blessed Sacrament that his ardent devotion was most clearly visible. In the presence of his Divine Lord, his face emitted brilliant rays of light, and he often bathed the ground with his tears as he prayed, according to his custom, prostrate before the tabernacle, constantly repeating the words of the psalmist, The zeal of thy house has consumed me. For seven years, Francis was obligated to retain the position of general superior, though it was a severe strain upon him. At last, he obtained permission from Pope Clement VIII to resign, and then he became prior of Santa Maria Maggiore. He still carried on his apostolic work in the confessional and in the pulpit, discoursing so constantly and movingly on the divine goodness to man that he was called the preacher of the love of God. We are also told with the sign of the cross he restored health to many sick persons. Finally, in the year 1608, he fell ill with a severe fever. He gave up his soul on the eve of Corpus Christi that year and went to join his Savior in heaven. He died, exclaiming, Let us go, let us go to heaven. When his body was opened after death, 
his heart was found seemingly burnt with the words imprinted around it, The zeal of thy house has consumed me.